Hey ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And please don't forget, as always, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you want. If you've already traveled during this pandemic or are planning on traveling during this pandemic or after the pandemic, please either share your experiences or your anticipations and what you look forward to. So a little bit about myself real quickly. My name is Jeremy Levin. I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I am the founder of a travel agency called Infinity Departures. So I not only book travel for my clients, but I also share this business with others and coach others on launching their own travel business. Anyway, today I invite you into my world and what I'm going to talk a little bit about is traveling after coronavirus. So we've all seen that things are slowly starting to open up. So is there really a demand in travel? I'm going to share that with you today. We are going to talk about airports and airlines, hotels and resorts, cruise lines, and overall health and safety of the traveler. Let's get started. So in my personal life experience, yes, I have a huge touch of cabin fever. So when this pandemic first started, I had vacation after vacation after vacation canceled. And that left me with a lot of emotions to handle because if you know me, I cannot sit still. So now, um, if you have been tuning into the news or travel blogs or things like that, you probably see a couple of things. One, that our airlines are going places now, our hotels and our resorts are slowly opening up, and travel is very, very cheap. And so there's two types of travelers right now that I'm seeing come to me, and these are the business travelers and the leisure travelers. And what's happening is, it's kind of cool and interesting, is since there is such a demand now, both types of travelers are competing. So the hotels know this, the airlines know this, everybody in travel and information management know that this is happening. And there's two reasons why this is happening. One, because everybody's been on lockdown, so A, they neither, either need to get back to business or they need to get back to their desti destination and they're rebooking a canceled trip or they're booking a new trip. And then the second part of that is inventory. So to keep a safe and healthy environment for travelers, our travel and tourism industry is being very, very mindful of the safety of the passengers and guests. So the inventory is a little bit less. So that's a little bit of travel in the big picture right now. I personally am very, very excited for myself to get back to traveling. As I mentioned, I had vacation after vacation after vacation just taken away from me. So I have actually been planning to get back out there. I did start slowly and tried to be safe by taking a little staycation, as I call it, even though it was about um, a two and a half, or three and a half hour drive. And I stayed the weekend on the east coast of Florida in St. Augustine, and that, that was fun. Um, I am going to be experiencing my first airport and air travel on the 25th of this month. We're here in June, and I will be doing a vlog about my experience during that and also during my hotel stay in Houston, Texas, my first time to the Lone Star State. So I've been getting a lot and a lot and a lot of emails from our airline suppliers because they are ready to welcome back travelers. And so airlines are doing a wonderful job, in my opinion, of keeping things as safe as possible with the capacity of the airline itself, with the cleanliness, and then also going actually into the airport um, through TSA and the gate and all of that good stuff. If you are ready to step into an airport and on an airplane, you are going to see some changes. You're going to see some signage and you're going to see the marquees echoing with instructions for social distancing. And in some instances, airlines are requiring you to wear a mask so that you're protecting others. 
If you do find yourself on an airplane pretty soon, you might find yourself on an aircraft with a very low census than what you're normally used to. If you're used to being crammed, maybe in the middle, um, the airlines are doing their best to not overbook and to really practice the social distancing. Now there are some things that you are going to see because an aircraft does have some requirements as far as weight and things like that. So they do have to make sure that the airplane's balanced, but they are really doing their best. And it's really up to your comfort level. If you feel like you're not ready to travel yet, I would recommend just waiting until you feel safe because you know I when I book flights and things for my clients I want them to feel safe and at peace of mind so that when they get to the destination they don't have to worry they can have fun. The other thing that a lot of airlines are doing is they're passing out packaged items for all the guests which would include something along the lines of a water bottle and perhaps a little snack and some Purell and this is to avoid them having to touch too many things, etc. When the aircraft pulls in to drop off the passengers, a lot of times if you've ever been sitting at the gate, you see the passengers get off the plane and then it's like, bam, it's, it's your time, it's your turn to board. Well, they are taking a lot more time to help prepare the aircraft using sanitization precautions provided by the CDC. Now I will say, you know, I will make a suggestion and this is what I'm going to do when I fly. I will be bringing my own hand sanitizer and some sanitizing wipes to wipe down my tray table, the seat in front of me, anything that I may touch. A good idea is to reach up into the little area, the little compartment area where you see all the buttons up, up above you that air vent, turn it all the way up because what that's gonna do is it's going to push all the air that's in front of you out and away from you. What you may expect at a hotel or a resort when you get to your destination is a lot of evolving of sanitization protocols. So again, in these big public spaces, you are going to see some signage and some things in regards to social distancing, similar to what you might see today if you were to walk into the grocery store and see signs and things like that. A lot of hotels are also offering paperless and contactless check-in and things like that, which really helps. That definitely eases my mind. There are also a lot of hotels that are not turning their rooms over for a certain period of time after the guest leaves and checks out. This is for your safety, just in case there is anything lingering around in the room. Time, as we all know, gives a chance for germs to die. You may not be able to have somebody carry your luggage up for you. You may not have access to room service. You may not even have access to the fitness center or the pool. This does vary, vary by the hotel. If you want to travel and you are wanting to stay at a hotel, get with me, your travel advisor. I will go over everything that is available for me to see so I can communicate that to you. This is one of my favorite forms of travel and vacation, personally, and perhaps the most controversial, and this is cruise lines. So COVID-19 hit the cruise industry hard, but guys, they are fighting back and they are ready. I really feel empathetic for a lot of the cruise lines because I do feel like there was some stigmatizing going on, and and that's, that's to be expected. See, Cruises don't create viruses, and cruise ships are not petri dishes. Uh, what happened was infected passengers were going on cruise ships just like they were going on airplanes and bringing things to other people. So that's what happened. It just happened a lot quicker because do you folks know how many cruise ships sail each and every day all around the globe? The numbers are astronomical. Anyway, so cruise ships, they are making some modifications to the way that they handle and conduct their sailings. Before you even board a cruise ship, the screening will be very prevalent and rigorous. Pre-boarding questionnaires about your health and pre-boarding temper checks are definitely something that passengers can expect. Many cruise lines are talking about getting away from the buffets just for a little while. This would eliminate, obviously, a lot of people congregating in one area at one time. When cruising, you may also expect fewer people in bigger places. For instance, the dining rooms and the theaters, and that is because a reduction of capacity 
See, cruise lines are adopting these new rules and regulations so that people not only feel safe aboard, but people stay safe aboard. Aboard a cruise ship, you can also expect to see social distancing measures to take place out on the pool deck. Who of you have been at a pool lately or a beach and you either see a sign about social distancing or you see the chairs organized at a public pool where they are not to be moved? So those are some things that you can expect on the cruise line as well. Do I personally think that this is going to cause some tension or maybe give passengers the thought that they might not be able to enjoy those spaces? I personally don't feel so because I actually have access to the inventory that I can see on all of these cruise lines. And what I'm seeing is a very, very compliant, proactive approach to really reach that goal and implement that mission to keep capacity super, super low. I have never felt that my quarters or even the large areas aboard a cruise ship were a concern to me as far as sanitization, but my gosh, the cruise lines are supercharging their cleaning protocols. And this makes me feel at ease. I don't know if I mentioned yet, but I have two cruises planned in August. And let me tell you, I am ready for the high seas. So there you have it folks, I really wanted to just give you an overview of what things are looking like at our airports, on the airplane, on our cruise ships, and our hotels and resorts. If you are ready to travel, feel free to reach out to me and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a call or shoot me an email. I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much again for tuning into my channel and watching my video. Again, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, or share. If you are traveling soon, please remember to be safe and have fun. Until next time, bon voyage!